Okay, we're going to be talking about this book, Toxic Faith, by Steve Arterman. And um, someone gave me this book because after I talked to him about faith, uh, walking with God, uh, they told, they gave me this book, thinking that I have toxic faith, which, according to this book, I do. I'm very toxic. Uh, but the, this is the, that's what how this gentleman, Mr. Arburn, defines godly faith, defines faith in God. Uh, he puts in all kinds of stories in here about people who have either they're not Christians at all or they're very new Christians that have, uh, you know, strange ideals about God. Lots of people do. The uh, How you get the right ideal about God is you walk with God. And, uh, of course, that's not his solution in here. Uh, but there is a real faith that's based upon a relationship with God. That is, God meets you and talks to you. You read his word. You get to understand him. But uh, according to Mr. Argerman, uh real faith is just doing good deeds and, uh, and really uh, not believing God will do anything in your life. So, uh, his, his faith is in a God that will help you to persevere through trials. He, he won't get you through it. That is, he, don't believe, he does not believe in miracles. He does not believe that God intercedes in a person's life. And if you believe that, then you are toxic. <clears throat> so, he says toxic faith in this book is, a, is a, people use it to avoid res reality and responsibility. So he's, his, his faith is based in reality, what he calls reality. That is, he's a mechanist. That is, uh, this world is what we have. You need to get it. You need to figure it out. And he has become an expert in emotions and, uh, well, the field of psychology, which is emotions in the mind. So he studied the emotions in the mind, became an expert. And uh, so he now he can give all the advice he wants to give because he is an expert. And if you need trouble, if you're troubled, if you have problems, a Christian or a non-Christian, you have to get the same treatment. The expert treatment of a me mechanist who believes this is just a big, you know, everything's just rolling along is the way it always has and it will not change. God will not intervene. So he says here, uh, people use faith as an excuse to wait for God to do what he wants you to do. Well, he wants you to do everything because he wants you to seek professional help. It's what is the obvious, uh, and he says this many, many times, what you really need to do is seek professional help. Professional help, not meaning a man of faith, or the Bible, or a professional such as God, Jesus Christ, He's, he's the ultimate professional. He knows everything. He is all-knowing and all-seeing and all-powerful. So that's who we should seek as a professional. Uh, okay, people with toxic faith dump responsibility on everything that happens on God. They want God to fix things instantly. And then if he doesn't fix it instantly, then they just wait. Well, that's a... Uh, I don't really, when I pray, I don't ask for, expect an instant fix. But God expects us to wait. Waiting is equated with patience. Patience equated with trust. And trust is equated with faith. Waiting is a very, very important principle in, in the godly life. But he says that's a cop-out. A cop-out, instead of doing for yourself, you're waiting on God. Uh, so, okay. It says here that we must act first. Pure faith acts, acts first. Well, that's just, that it shows where his heart is. His heart is, no, the, you can't, there's nothing, you don't pray first, you act first. You don't wait on, you don't pray and wait on God. He's a mechanist. 
Uh, here's another statement. Perhaps God so most often simply uses consequences of our own poor decisions to discipline us. So God is consequences with him. Uh, if you have bad consequences, that you just need to learn to make better choices. So God, in his world, God is passive. God uses consequences of our poor decisions to discipline us. And that's all. There is no God that works in a person's life. There's just consequences. Uh, in their denial, people of toxic faith, they claim that every coincidence is a miracle of God. If these truth, proofs do not come immediately, they wait. Here's a, once again, it's a, it's a, uh, it's an evil thing. It's foolish to wait. Uh, in Cloud and Townsend's book on habits, hangups, and uh, some other H word, they say, never wait for God to change your circumstances. Be proactive and get out and change things yourself, because that's the only way things will happen. And really, for being proactive means seek a profession, seek professional help. <clears throat> so, Mr. Uh, Mr. Arterburn says in another one of his books that I read recently, um, said that he was having trouble in his marriage and he prayed and prayed and prayed for a miracle and a miracle did not happen. No miracle came. He never attributes anything to a miracle happen. This is just it is this way of saying that I tried this praying thing and nothing happened. It doesn't work. I've heard him say on this program, his radio program, New Life Ministries, if you have a spouse or that has got emotional problems, do not pray for them because God will not answer that prayer. God will not answer any prayer according to this guy. An another statement he makes in the other book is he knew a woman that was blind. So she prayed and she was healed. So he goes in to say, well, God healed her. But how did God heal her? Possibly she was hit on the head and that made a connection back into her eyes. Or possibly she was being healed naturally all along. And then it just was a coincidence that she prayed and then she got healed. And then he gives all, several other possible natural phenomenon that could have happened for this woman to be healed. The guy does not, he, he has, sees a miracle right in front of his face that even a nominal Christian would go, that's a miracle. But he, he has to attribute it to the natural world because God, the God in his life is not in his life. He believes in a God, if he believes in God, that saves you and then and then when you get saving means when you die, you go to heaven. Although he does state in that in a book that I read of his that said, when we get to heaven, if we get there. Here is just his heart being made man. You read enough of somebody and you're going to see their heart made manifest. If we get there, if we get to heaven. He's, he's just a, and he uses lots of God words because God ideals God sings uh, uh, very religious talk because he knows his audience. He's a psychologist. He's trying to make lots. He's making lots and lots of money selling his product, which is not God. It's mechanism. So that's enough for now. And we'll speak about this guy again later. Thank you.